Hi, dance friends. My name is Alexa Lopez, and I am the podcast host of the Dance Research Podcast. Here on YouTube, I help young dancers just like you spark their dance career. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below to keep up with it cool tips that we give here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about skills that every dance professional should have. So skill number one that you might want to have in order to be considered a dance professional is the ability to adapt your movement. So dancers usually have to keep up with the high demands of their choreographers. So a few ways that you can adapt your movement based on your choreographer's needs is learning how to transform one move into another type of movement, another variation, let's say. So this may include transforming a movement into a different timing, a different texture, or different levels and qualities. Another way that you might have to transform a movement is taking a solo and putting it into a group movement or the group movement into a duet and so on and so on. So that you have to adapt those movements with different dynamics with people around you if that makes sense skill number two that you should have is have smooth transitions i have talked about this one in a video before so i'll link it over here and it's about college dance additions and i mentioned this because i truly truly believe that the difference between a professional and a novice is how you go from point a to point b so how you go into this transition so when you learn a new choreography analyze your transitions so always always think how can i make this specific transition into a smooth one into a seamless one and just to give you a hint plies are almost always going to be the best answer the deeper the plie the smoother the plie you're basically going to go from one move to the next skill number three that you should have is good spatial awareness now i say this because when i was in community college there was a dancer who didn't have a lot of spatial awareness. And what ended up happening is that she landed on the back of my head and kneed me. And let me tell you, that caused a concussion and no director wants to work with people who can't be aware of their surroundings. They can't work with other people around them. So especially when you're dancing in the, with a big, big group, in a tight stage, you have to be extra conscious of your surroundings. So a tip that I have for you for this is to always rehearse the way that you're going to perform on stage. So for example, you don't want to just mark the whole rehearsal process and then all of a sudden go full full out on stage because the people around you are not going to know that you all of a sudden can do this big movement and you're gonna be like whacking everyone around you and people are not going to like you for that. So if you're gonna go full out on stage, make sure you're going full out uh, during in the studio, in the rehearsal space. If you're going to be lazy on stage, then make sure that you're lazy on in the studio, but always stick to one because people have to rehearse the way that they're going to perform so that there's no mistakes on stage or or injuries on stage also always kind of measure your kinesthetic field and how much you can reach and be big without being in other people's bubble because i can't tell you how many times i've danced with people that are in my bubble and i feel like they are going to kick me so i can't go full out so always make sure that you are hyper aware of your surroundings and your sphere. Skill number four is quick pickup. So usually choreographers don't want to spend the whole rehearsal time going over the same eight four counts, just repeating, repeating, repeating because the dancers can't retain it in their head. And let me tell you, this is hard. I'm not the best at it, <laughs> but I feel like I have some tips that I can give you so you can work on it as well. So additions. Additions are really good places for you to learn how to quick pick up. And a lot of people just show up to additions because one, usually additions are free. And two, it's a good way to just learn how to remember choreography 
like that. And this is because auditions go way, way faster than a regular class does because they have so many people to get through. So you will be forced to learn a choreography in like a couple of minutes. So auditions are a good place. Another way that you can practice quick pickup is to learn choreographies from an online source. Learn as many choreographies online as you can and try to learn it as fast as you can. Also, there's other techniques that you may want to include. So for example, try to test how you learn best. So for me, I kind of have to watch first and then try it on my body. So definitely figure out how you can learn the best as you can. So if you need to mark it first, if you need to go full out, if you need to watch it first, that's going to make a big, big difference on how quickly you can actually put that choreography in your body. Skill number five is have good partnering skills. Companies need strong and reliable dancers. I'm not the strongest dancer, meaning not like physically, like I can't pick up a lot of pounds per se, because <laughs> I'm really wimpy, but I'm really strong in the sense that I know how to distribute other people's weight on my body and how to distribute my weight on other people's body. So always play around on how much you can take um, weight wise and how much you can give weight wise to like a family member you can practice kind of like just Going like that kind of like a push-up position Also, whenever you're doing partner work make sure that you always always grind yourself first You don't want to pick up someone and be like on your tippy toes and not having your full weight on the ground So rule of thumb is knowing how much weight you can give to someone and how much weight you can receive from someone and this will always depend on each situation because sometimes it, when you're doing certain things in certain positions you will be asked to do more weight or less weight and you know vice versa so yeah those are my takes on what makes a professional professional definitely let me know in the comments below if this kind of resonates with you and if it helps you too Please check the description box below because I have a free dance career guide for you. This dance career guide is going to tell you what you need to work on in order for you to start your dance career. So definitely check it out and make sure you subscribe because next week we're going to be talking about dance portfolio tips and how to do it. Bye!